It's the window to our jobs, to those we love, to how we live more than ever before. We relied on screens and technology long before COVID-19, but the pandemic has made our reliance shine even brighter. This week, we look at how technology can be a tool to take on life's hurdles and how, in some cases, it's become the hurdle itself. This is The Race. Welcome to The Race, I'm Chris Stewart. You hear leaders not far from where we are in Washington, D.C. talk about how important the coronavirus vaccine is to ending this pandemic. But for many, the process of getting the shot is difficult and confusing, especially when trying to book an appointment online. And that's why a group here in Maryland that is used to helping people find answers is stepping in. That we have. Okay. Doesn't look we'll weird. This we'll is a neat you. one. Like many couples in this pandemic. We went well, it's to only 26. three presidents? No. We had two bushes, so to speak. Oh, two bushes. You've, you left one bush out. Well, I'm not a landscape okay. guy. So the... Mark and Jesse Stern have spent a lot of time together. I get tired sometimes at the end of the day, and he can say, although I don't like it when he says it. What? Um, it's 5 o'clock. I'm getting the 5 o'clock. Um, mm. so that's because I'm less patient than I should Well, 60 years of marriage can prepare you for quarantine life. In her career, she reported on medicine. He worked at the National Institutes of Health. For instance, when Ron Howard, and we had seen him as a kid in Music Man. Oh, you forgot Colin Powell here. I know, he came by to see what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> now retired, for decades, their jobs brought them close to what most of us can only read about. A photograph picture? Yes. But when it came to getting the coronavirus vaccine, they felt very far away. And you have to be proactive. This is the most proactive oh, guy you'll ever meet. No, no. The Stearns are like many who've struggled to get a vaccine appointment on their own. There was a three hour line. But the people in this room were teachers know how to solve a problem. A lot opened up today, this morning. And within an hour, everything was gone. Dina, Courtney, and Maisie. We just take care of people all day long. Our public high school teachers outside D.C. If we can give our time and give somebody that back, like that's pretty amazing. They're part of a group of vaccine hunters who volunteer hours every day, helping people find vaccine appointments in the D.C. area. Yeah, yeah a little bit further, There's yeah. All for free. A lot of it is in between classes. We're like checking sites. I'm so tired. <laughs> These teachers field countless calls. I get up at midnight. Then I get up at three. Texts and messages in hopes they can give people an edge by finding appointments. A lot of people might not even have access to a computer or internet. Which is hard when appointments open and close so quickly. We're good, we're good, oh, good. We're okay. back, back, back to, we're back. Just ask the Stearns. They had to act fast when the vaccine hunters called. We had an hour and a half. If you search vaccine hunters on Facebook, you'll find many groups across the country. The need is never ending. Because for every Mark and Jesse Stern. No, that's the okay. kids. This is, this right. is our, I think, our favorite okay. picture of them. There are other grandparents, parents, loved ones in need of help finding their way through this pandemic. So we didn't ask for this plague, but now that we've got it, you got to fight it with everything you've got. One man hopes his COVID story will inspire others to get the vaccine. He told Alexa Liaco how technology kept him alive when he was at his sickest. He can barely breathe. I may be using oxygen for the rest of my life. Ten months after getting COVID-19, Craig Schaefer is still healing. Honestly, it's uh, something different every day. But each day, the pain comes with gratitude. I realize how fortunate I am, even on my worst days. Blessed to lug around this heavy tank. Typically three liters, that's what I'm on. After he couldn't breathe on his own for nearly two months. I kept having these moments of lucidity and then I'd be delirious again, be completely out of it. He was so sick he doesn't remember the doctor who saved his life. Dr. J. How are you? I'm good. Now, I'm 10 months here. later, yeah. they're getting the chance to meet and to hug. Good to, you. Good to finally good meet, to you. meet you. A gesture of warmth meaning more now than ever before. How are you? It's been a rough year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. doing okay? 
Yeah, I'm doing okay. But Craig is here, and he's glad Dr. Jane never gave up. It's really good to see you like this. Even after he called in Craig's family to say their final goodbyes. It was extremely difficult. Um, and just trying to talk to him, knowing that he's not, he's not able to respond, so that was really hard. I love you, honey. They had tried everything. But Dr. Jane had one last idea to help Craig fight COVID. And this oxygenator acts as the... The lung. A rarely used medical device might just help him survive. The extracorporeal membrane oxygenation machine, or ECMO for short. And the red is the return to the body or oxygenated blood. You can take over the work of the lungs or the heart and the lungs. And that allows the, the machine to take over the work and let those organ systems rest and hopefully recover. For Craig, it gave his body a chance to fight when nothing else could. Without it, I, I certainly would not be here right now. But for so many families wondering why this rare device wasn't used for their loved one, the ECMO machine is harder on the lungs than a ventilator and works only on patients that have few or no pre-existing conditions. Only about a thousand hospitals in the country have an ECMO machine and the staff needed to run it, and it's not always successful. With the success rate of ECMO being, you know, only 50-50, do you still think it's worth it to try? Yes, I think, you know, offering this therapy to give them a, a little bit more of a chance is, is worth it. For Craig, the 23 days he spent on the ECMO machine inside Mercy Hospital of Buffalo ended in a moment where he wasn't sure if he had a chance. I remember hearing Cindy saying, follow the light, feel the love. And I remember just being like in white clouds trying to figure out, well, how do I get to her? Waking up and, and two months has disappeared. I'll tell you, that's it's quite quite a shock to your soul as a human being. He was at the door. I know that his, on a soul level, he's he's got more to do here. More time with his grandchildren and someday getting back to his career are on the list. But for now, Craig's taking his time to recover both physically and yeah. mentally. I definitely deal with, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress um, as because you continually think about what happened to you. Every day I wake up and I see, you know, the scars on my face, they're everywhere. And it's just, it's a constant reminder. A reminder of what he almost lost, yeah, but with that, a greater reminder of what he gained. Yeah. Yeah. Good thing I'm not a crier. <laughs> <laughs> so many folks were not fortunate and I was one of the ones who was, you know, blessed enough to, to be able to continue on in this, this journey of life. So I feel great, very grateful. For The Race, I'm Alexa Liaco. Nearly three quarters of American workers work from home these days. Maybe you're watching this from your home office right now. We'll show you the high-tech home office setups that people are investing in as they gear up to work from home long-term when The Race continues. <laughs>